Almost everyone in the programming world wants to become a full stack developer. What does a full stack developer mean? Does a full stack developer need to know cloud and DevOps? That's what we would be discussing in this specific video. And to discuss that, I have Balaji and Pawan with me. Welcome Balaji and Pawan. Hey, hey Ranga. Hi, Ranga. Hey Pawan. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us, Ranga. Uh, Pawan, would, Pawan and Balaji have a set of questions that we are going to discuss on. Let's start with your questions, Pawan. Yeah. So I, I would like to start with very, very basic uh, question. Like, okay, what is a full stack? Who is called a full stack developer? Yeah. It, even though it's a basic question, I think it's a very, very difficult question to answer, Pawan, because different people have different representations of what a full stack developer means, right? So let's make it easy, right? Let's say uh, you are building a web application. Uh, and like the web application has a like UI, and you have technology which talks to backend, shows the data on the UI. So this is probably the entire chain, right? So whenever we talk about a web application, uh, that's what we are talking about. Let's take a simple example, right? This is a simple to-do application that we have. So you are displaying a list of to-dos on the screen, and this data is coming from the database, right? Earlier, if we go a, a little while back. Uh, probably the way we would implement this is like probably a JSP servlet or a Python uh, based framework in the front end, and you would have a back end database. But over a period of time, what happened is we started evolving towards more of a separate front end and a back end kind of a technology, right? So, what, what we started doing is switching towards kind of this kind of an architecture, where what we are doing in here is we have a REST API in the back end. And we have our front-end application, which is talking to the REST API, and the REST API is talking to the database. So in, like, let's say, five years back, somewhere in that time period is where we started going towards this kind of applications, where instead of uh, just having one front-end application with everything, uh, like maybe a JSP servlet or a Spring, Spring Boot or a Django-based thing, what we are now doing is separating it out. So we have a back-end REST API, we have a front-end application, and we have a database. And when we got to this stage is when the talk of full stack applications, full, full stack developers came into picture, right? Because now there are two different technologies which are involved. One is backend. You want to build REST APIs. And you also need to know front end, right? You, uh, you want to know uh, like JavaScript and you want to be, be able to build an application that runs on the browser. So this is kind of a high level overview of the like uh, different things which are involved in the front end develop. I mean, in the full stack developer a few years back. But today, where do we deploy this application? We deploy this application to cloud. We deploy probably you do DevOps. So yes. I mean, there are huge number of def, uh, like definitions of what a full stack developer is based on where do you see the role, right? So if you are seeing the role of a developer as somebody who just uh, like uh, uh, like just builds the front end back end and talking to the database uh, that also is a full stack developer but the next level of full stack developer is basically somebody who can build a front end app a back end app and also deploy it to cloud and do devops right so that's i mean this is there's no standard definition so i, I was just trying to give a high level picture so pawan yes. and balaji what do you see like what other definitions of full stack developer do you see right now yeah, Balaji, uh, do you want to take a shot at this? Yeah, yeah, sure, Pavan. So I, I, I usually actually uh, see a full stack application like a person who is be able to create a front end application who can also handle the back end as well as the middleware. So that's what I see because uh, uh, when when I started with full stack development, I had a misconception that we need we don't need to learn database on the back end. That's when I understood okay, full stack development is something you need to take care of end to end everything you from the application development to testing and everything, you need to work on that. That's what my, my take on what full stack development is. Absolutely. Over to you, Pavan. Yes. Yeah. So for me, a full stack developer is uh, like someone who can, like who is like, uh, like Ranga mentioned, right? Currently in the agile environment, he should be capable of doing end to end anything, right? So right from the front end application to middleware to a back end and then database and cloud deployment, right? That, that's that's the whole sum of a full stack developer. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And just to add on to that, right? Uh, people might think, okay, I can't learn everything. It's very, very difficult, right? So that's yes. typically. Uh, the thing is, 
today like, i would say uh, earlier we were actually expected to be specialized like we were expected to be specialized on java and build a java application but today i would say the world is shifting more towards generalized or what people typically call a t shaped kind of skills yes. right when we say uh, you need to know end to end it does not mean you are an expert at end to end right you are yes. you might be a back end expert you are really really good at designing rest api you are really good at the back end language and you are able you are good at back end frameworks and you build the apis but you also know a little bit of front end so that you can connect front end to back end i mean exactly. or you also know how cloud works devops works you might not need to be an expert at everything but yes. it's very very important that the teams you build like as we go towards devops like the team needs to have these shaped skills right so in that sense it's important that people have a high level overview of most of the things and are specialized at certain things yes like a core skill which they concentrate on and develop their ability completely and then absolutely. they they go to the t shaped horizontal all the skills right yeah absolutely okay. absolutely yeah so i i, I think uh, like okay if at all someone is there who wants to get started to full stack and is like okay right now they know they do, they, they are like zero programming what would you recommend how should how can they become a full stack computer? yeah i would think the best place to start is either the front end or the back end don't try both at the same time it's important to choose one of them right uh, it's a difficult choice whether you are whether you want to go for front end or back end but if you are an expert at either of them you'll do well like you will not go wrong choosing either back end or front end right so choose one of them and get started with that so if you are choosing the front end probably one of the popular options is javascript actually not popular the only option is javascript <laughs> uh, yeah exactly and you have typescript as well so like typescript is just an enhanced uh, javascript right and you have frameworks like angular react vue so you can pick up like probably if you, somebody is starting today i would recommend them to start with react right so uh, if somebody wants to be a full stack developer the first thing is to be good at one of these right one of either front end and back end so if they choose front end they can start with react and be good at building react applications yes. right that's what they need to start so they need to start building a lot of applications with react and get familiar with react yes. um, the other approach is to start with the back end right so you might for example you like building apis in that kind of situation understand what is a rest api what are the best practices of rest api and start learning how to build rest apis in a language of your choice today if you look at back end languages which are popular java python um you can node also can be used node js is used to yes. uh, build back end apps and also go right so these four would be like some of the popular languages which are used to back end to develop back end so that might be a first step as well so you can start with the back end and become an expert so it's very very important that you are an expert at that thing you don't want to uh, at the start itself jump into too many things so focus yeah. either on the front end or back end and become an expert on that yes cool yeah so yeah now i i get started now either i learn a front end framework and i'm expert in it or i learn a back end framework and i'm expert in it what is the next yeah. step that is logically for me to take and enhance my skills like how do i go to the t shaped scale absolutely absolutely so that would really depend on the context you are in right so once you have your core skills then it depends on the specific context you are in if let's say you are working on a project already and you are making use of that skill then probably if that project is making use of cloud and devops probably that's the best thing to start learning instead of trying like let's say you are good at back end and your project is making use of cloud and devops so maybe cloud and devops is something you would want to learn but the other thing is like maybe like your teams have a shortage of front end right so then you can start learning front end so it depends on the context uh, if you are a good back end developer you have the option of either trying to learn the front end next or you have the option of learning cloud and no. once you are on the cloud it would be becoming easy to do the devops so yeah that's probably i would say the journey it really depends on the context how do you okay. see uh, balaji like uh, like uh, are there any other journeys possible pavan uh, yeah so uh... yeah when, when when absolutely as you mentioned right uh, i i think at least i have grown in my project like when they said okay there is a requirement for front end and there is a shortage until we hire a front end we need someone to scale up right yeah, yeah i was a back end developer and then i scaled up to a front end uh, and absolutely. then as you mentioned it, it it always depended on the context of what i was learning yeah exactly. so they should look out on the on the context and if at all say they don't have opportunity in the project right they can always have a habit of 
no okay select something okay i'm a back end developer okay let me try and understand oh, how to build a front end application or let me try and understand how to deploy the back end application into the cloud right devops exactly so, exactly yeah. exactly so if if you don't know if you don't if you are confused about where to go you are a good backend developer you are confused about where to go then learn cloud right yeah, if you are confused go to the cloud because if you learn the cloud if you are good at building applications if you are building it good at building a java application or a python application and you are build it good at building rest api then probably if you are confused just go to the cloud i think cloud is something which you definitely need uh, in the yes. long run so yes. yeah go towards the cloud and uh, like if you are confused right if there is a front end need jump into front end definitely yeah. yeah what about you balaji what do you think yes fun so i actually agree to what you have been saying like uh, if a person is working as a front end engineer or a back end engineer so one should be always uh, look out for opportunities like if someone as a, as ranga mentioned there might be opportunities where uh, there might be some uh, demand for back end developers in your team and there is no back end developers so if you are a person who is continuously exploring or learning about the full stack development and stuff so you can be a person who can scale very easily in the it industry so that's what i have seen in the last few years of my uh, experience uh, that that's what the continuous learning uh, which we have spoken in a previous videos uh, continuous learning in whatever technologies that people work that will scale them in their career so that's what i would like to say Exactly. Absolutely, and like one thing I would want to add in here is, if you are a front end developer, probably switching to back end is little difficult yes. because uh, if you look at JavaScript and Java, like switching from JavaScript to Java is very difficult. But if you know yeah. Java, switching to JavaScript is easier. So yeah. some of like, uh, yeah, that is something like if you are a front end developer, probably you would want to directly jump into cloud without worrying about back end because kind of like if your back end is in Java. maybe if your back end is in python or something probably it's a different question, cup of tea uh, but switching from javascript to java is much tougher than java to javascript yeah, yeah. i i agree i agree to that point right because most of the people struggle on uh, uh, probably understanding the difference between async and sync because javascript is completely async and when they are into that environment and they are like okay what is this language doing <laughs> right yeah, exactly. so and oops concepts is like javascript is not necessarily needed but like when they see frameworks like angular right they are into it already so i think someone from angular background might find it easy to uh, go towards java but again again it's debatable there are backends like python uh, yeah. django framework right and they're like it's it's completely difficult for them so yeah absolutely yeah. i think yeah it's yeah i've seen in my experience that backend developers are able to pick up front end skills faster than Easy. front end skills uh, front end developers switching to backend but it's yeah. possible it's not that it's not possible it's difficult. just yeah, a it's little difficult journey yeah cool yeah so yeah there is a popular myth about uh, around uh, full stack right everyone thinks full stack is a person should know java to know full stack so what are the alternates of java full stack are there yeah. alternates of full stack to that yeah. absolutely as we discussed right different people have different definitions of what full stack is yeah. so uh, if you if you want a full stack developer uh, who knows the back end api like who knows building back end right typically back ends are built today in java or python or node or go. go so these are the four languages that back end apis are built in so i mean if you want you can call somebody a go full stack developer or a python full stack developer <laughs> node js full stack developer right uh, yeah those those are the probable variations on full stack developers yeah yeah so i, I think this this is the last question probably i i am uh, out of the questions to ask then uh, so yeah there are people in industry who are non programmers like db admins right mm -hmm. they directly get into cloud managing the databases and and stuff so can they pick up full stack can they become full stack developers is it possible is there a path for them yeah i think they have to do this entire path that we have talked from the start of this video right so what we said is either pick up front end or back end and start the journey if somebody yeah. wants to become a full stack developer i would not recommend them to get into everything at one go you don't yeah. want to start with front end back end devops cloud everything at one go then you are not learning anything so yeah. there should be like when as we said for a full stack developer it's very very important to have a specialized skill so uh, they have to pick up a specialized skill uh, but uh, i think i would not advise a de de database guy to get into a full stack kind of a thing maybe an operations 
engineer or thing people like that i would recommend them to get into kind of a full stack developer role yes. if you are a database engineer i would recommend you to actually probably explore something on the cloud like related to data itself i mean there are yes. so many opportunities related to data engineering on the cloud today that yes. database like your knowledge of databases will be really really useful to take the next step into the cloud exactly yeah so i'm i'm done with my set of questions uh, ranga and malaji cool. Yeah, so was, yeah, thank you, Bhavan. It was a really nice questions for a beginner. So, Raga, I have a few more questions um, on the top of my head. So, as we have seen that uh, what is full stack development and uh, what can people do to get started with full stack development. Uh, so, my first question is a uh, lot of people are getting started with full stack development. So, can you please tell us the importance of understanding the SDLC process when it comes to developing yes. applications? absolutely i think yeah that's the fundamental right how your application like the entire application goes through a life cycle right it's not just one step you, it does not end when you develop it and there are different uh, people playing different roles in a team right so there are a lot of things that come into picture when we talk about the entire life cycle right you would start with dev stage qa maybe some staging environment production so this is the entire life cycle and it's very very important that somebody who's joining a project or developing an application needs to know what are the next steps right when you create an application you want to create an application which will work in production right it's not just that something that works in your local environment or in the dev environment it's something which should be working in production and having an idea about how your production environment is and what are the processes that are involved in taking your application from dev to stage to production right so dev to qa to stage to production and also having an understanding of the quality processes that you have in place right so uh, you might like a lot of us today write unit tests right so you need to write really really good unit tests uh, you need to have good integration tests and after that probably you would have automated system tests and there are a lot of things that would happen right probably once you commit code to uh, a git repo uh, a continuous integration continuous deployment cycle might be kicked in so you should understand those things as well so you need to understand how the deployable unit of your application is created if let's say you are actually uh, building a java application then are you going to create a jar as a deployable unit or are you going to create a docker image as a deployable unit so you need to understand the entire process so how is your uh, deployable unit deployed to the specific environment is it deployed as a jar or a container so having a good idea of the entire life cycle of how your code is going to go to production is very very important aspect of learning but again uh, if you are a starting developer you don't really need to focus on all the all those parts right away initially focus on building your application really really well and when you join a project or when you get an opportunity to talk to somebody who is experienced try and understand these aspects right try and understand what would happen after you write the code yes sir that that provides a lot of insights so uh... So moving on to my next question. So a person is developing a full stack application. Can you tell us the importance of um, programming and problem solving aspects uh, when it comes to building full stack applications? Well, I mean, that's the fundamentals of like uh, all the premise of whatever we are talking about in here is based on good knowledge at a specific programming language, right? Unless you know a programming language very well and unless you are able to solve problems with it, you might not want to like, if you want to be a full stack developer uh, building web applications you might not want to worry about data structures algorithms system design a lot at the early stage itself but you should be good at programming you should know what is like your programming language you should be able to solve problems with it at least the basic problems with it problem solving is the most important thing uh, like is the fundamental block before everything that we talked you should be a good programmer yeah this thing okay so when we take a look at my next question so there are a lot of projects that we can uh, develop as part of full stack application so can you tell us some of the projects that uh, students or uh, professionals who are looking to learn full stack development can focus upon yeah i think the simplest one is this uh, the application that i showed right it's a simple to do management application uh, one of the things is like in the initial stages when you are developing a full stack application you would want to keep your application simple so that you can go through the entire life cycle right so just try build a small api build a small front end connect to it 
once you are able to connect the end to end, like your front end talking to a back end talking to a database, then you can focus on the non-functional aspects, right? Security is very, very important. Authentication, authorization, like the authentication and authorization for a full stack application might be a little different from typical REST API kind. I mean, typical older kind of web applications, right? Here, probably you'd create something like a JWT token, a front end, like once a user logs in, you'd create a JWT token, it's in the front end. And whenever a front end makes a REST API call to the back end, it would send the token along with it so that it can authenticate uh, to the like back end, right? So uh, you need to understand how authentication authorization works. You need to understand how to make a REST API call from front end to back end. You need to understand uh, the specific uh, way a specific framework works, right? React works a specific way. If you're going to work with Angular, it works a specific way. So you need to understand how to structure your code with uh, React and Angular. Uh, like the same is the case with the backend APIs as well. That's amazing, Kanga. So a person has developed a full stack application. Now, can you please tell us the importance of uh, writing clean code or even can you tell us what is clean, clean code at first? And you can also Absolutely. tell us the importance of it. Yeah. Absolutely, right? So uh, again, this is not linked to full stack development at all. Any programmer, uh, sh uh, like anybody who calls himself a good programmer should be able to write clean code. What do I mean by clean code? Clean code is something where I write the code, Balaji looks at it, and he's able to understand it very well. For me, that's the basic definition of clean code. There are a lot of other things, right? When I write code, it should be working. It should satisfy all the non-functional requirements, like uh, the right the code I write should uh, should not cause any scalability issues or availability issues or it should not cause any uh, security issues it, right so all those are high level I mean very very complex things but at the basic level for me clean code means I write code Pavan is able to understand and Balaji is able to understand it so mm -hmm. making sure that your code uh, is written in such way if we are talking about for example Java how you name your classes have you structure your methods? Have you name your methods? These are very, very basic things. How you name your variables? These are very basic things, but these are the ones which make a huge difference in how readable your code is. It, like it's like a uh, lot of like uh, clean code is something I'm really passionate about. So I have done a lot of work on that. So uh, like maybe next time we talk, I can bring up a few examples of bad code and uh, like. So I kind of do experiments around. Like I implement something in some way. And I show it to learners and ask them to like figure out how much time it takes to understand this code versus another code of same kind, right? So typically, like you'd see that if you write code well, if you organize your code well, uh, you can bring factors of two or three times improvement in how much time it takes to understand your code. Remember that code is written once, but maintained for a lifetime, right? So it's... Uh, like whatever code you are writing now, at least 10 to 20 people will be reading that code in the next year. And if we we'll really look at long term, it might be a lot more people uh, looking at that code over a period of time. So it's very, very important that whatever you write, not only you understand, but everybody else understands as well. So I like to say, like, uh, if somebody feels it's very, very difficult to get started with writing, like writing clean code, there is something called four principles of simple design. So it's a very, very simple concept, right? Like a lot of times our coding standards are very complex. Our design things are very complex. Our architectural things are very, very complex. If somebody is getting started, I would recommend it to, I will recommend them to focus on four principles of simple design. Just go to YouTube, search for four principles of simple design and understand what those are. And just try to implement those four principles of simple design in your uh, code. And that would be a great first step to starting uh, with clean code. Yes, that, yes. that's amazing. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, would you like to add something to that? Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely understand the importance of this, what you mentioned, Ranga. Reason being, uh, so in, in, in my experience, I've shifted so many projects and when, whenever I shift to projects, right, it's not necessarily that I start out on a project which is from scratch, right? I start out from a project which is already built to a level and now mm -hmm. I have to understand the project. So how quickly can I understand what is in the code and how quickly am I able to you know, put myself into the project is more important. So writing Absolutely. clean code enables uh, a lot of efficiency in the team's building ability. Yeah, yeah. In addition to clean code, I would say, uh, how you structure the project also yes. is very, very important, right? Exactly. Like the movement, uh, like, uh, like let's say I have an enterprise, large enterprise, 
if each project like if I have 100 projects and 100 projects are similar to each other in structure, in high level structure, then it becomes much more easier for people to move from one project to another project, right? Yeah. So at a high level, structure is important and also clean code is like how you organize things and how clean your code is. Those two things are things which I typically focus on a lot. That's that's where the industry standards and organized standards come into the picture, right? Absolutely, absolutely. That, that's great, Anka. So. So we have uh, full stack development in place and uh, recently in the recent years, there are a lot of frameworks and a lot of new technologies that are uh, being coming up in terms of full stack development. So how can someone after learning full stack development, can they stay updated when it comes to learning the frameworks? For an example, we have uh, React.js, Angular.js and so on, which is built on top of JavaScript. But still, mm. there are a lot of frameworks that are built on top of React.js and Angular.js itself. So how can people stay updated with that? Yeah, I mean, the, th the thing is, you don't need to really learn everything which is happening in the industry. Right? Mm -hmm. It's very, very important to identify what are things which you are likely to use. Uh, I kind of think like this, right? So if I'm likely to use something in the near future, I'll go deeper. But if I'm not likely to use it in the near future, I'll try and get an overview of it. For example, if there is something called Vue.js coming in. So I'll try and understand, okay, how is Vue.js different from React? How is Vue.js different from Angular? But I'll not go and try and implement 10 applications with it, right? So I'll try and understand at a high level what's happening. Uh, but I would not really worry about implementing an application with Vue.js unless I am very, very sure that I'm going to use Vue.js. Or like you are like me and you want to create a course on Vue.js, you might want to go deeper and learn it very, very well, right? So it depends like on the usage. If you are not going to write code with it in the near future, I would not really recommend anybody to get deeper into it. But it's important to follow the trends in the industry, right? That's the way you stay updated. And that's the way uh, you will know what's happening. And when a new opportunity comes in, you can react to it and like learn that very, very quickly. So it's all about uh, having a high level overview. Some of the things that people can do is like try and stay like, for example, there are a lot of surveys which are connect conducted, right? There are front end developer surveys, back end developer surveys. So maybe following that every few months, once in a while to see, okay, what's happening in the industry, which frameworks are getting popular, uh, what are the tools which are getting popular, why is containers getting popular, why is container orchestration getting popular, right? So why is cloud getting popular? So try and figure out, uh, a high, having a high level knowledge helps, but you don't need to know how in depth about everything that's happening. Yeah, I, I completely uh, agree to that, Ranga. Also, I have something very interesting to say. So initially, when we talked about uh, having a core knowledge on a particular language, right? Right. Uh, when Balaji asked, okay, should uh, should a person know uh, a language very well or a uh, programming logic very well? So when they know that language very well, right? These are all libraries built on top of those languages. So they can easily understand those languages. So it's always on the go learning, right? Yeah. So. Absolutely. I think uh, you're making a valid point there, Pawan. If I know Angular and React well, uh, I can probably learning Vue will not be as complex yes. because I know JavaScript, which is the fundamental language, right? It's like if I know uh, struts very well, it might not be a lot of effort to switch to Spring. It's not like learning a new programming language, right? It's just switching a framework. Uh, if you know how to build a web, good web application, how to, if you know how to build a good front end with Angular and React, you can easily yes. switch to Vue.js. I think also there was a second part uh, that Balaji wanted asked already, right? Angular is there. So there are frameworks built on top of Angular, like Angular material library or something, right? Yeah. So it is as if you are good at Angular, right? You are good at JavaScript. You learned Angular. Mm. And then building, uh, using the component library is as simple as understanding Angular, right? Exactly. So it, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's all about how good you are at understanding Angular, right? So whenever yeah. like there is something built on top of something, uh, the question always falls back to how well you understand what is the layer beneath, right? Yes, so a exactly. lot of times, actually, I had this, uh, like, I wanted to put this one in here, right? So actually, I wanted to stick it somewhere on the wall to tell, okay, okay what is important is, like, not what is above. Like, yes. the fundamentals exactly. are the most important part, right? Once you understand yeah. the fundamentals, it becomes easier for you to build buildings on top of it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Understanding basics is much more important. Yes, Anga. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. yeah. So, Anga, and we are we are at the final stages where I have last few questions. Uh, now, the industry is evolving a lot, and uh, I see 
a lot of companies expect full stack developers to also have some knowledge on how the cloud works and how the deployment at least till how do you deploy it using kubernetes and docker and stuff so can you tell us some insights on that yeah absolutely i think as we talked at this start right so earlier full stack development a few years back people used to call full stack development up to uh, developing a front end back end and talking to the database but now people also add a little bit of cloud and devops into it but one of the most important things people need to understand is that once you know once you are good at full stack development old full stack development once you are good at building a back end if you are good at building a front end if you know your database really really well learning the cloud is not as difficult as learning programming or learning to build applications uh, if you are techy if you know how to build applications cloud is just a place where you deploy your application instead of your data center you are deploying it in the cloud so i don't think it's a complex thing to learn uh, especially for a lot of technical guys like i see l- l- like they are able to move to the cloud and pick up the cloud concepts within 2 to 3 months right i mean you don't become an expert on the cloud in 2 to 3 months but you get sufficient knowledge so that you can take the application you are building make the right choices around it and deploy it to the cloud right you are not looking at mastering every one of the 200 services which is present in aws what you are looking at is what are the cloud services that you would need to know to deploy your specific application to the cloud right in that kind of if i look at that way probably i'm looking at five to six services in the cloud and getting an understanding of networking and security because the networking and security paths are kind of very very different when compared to like your data center right when we talk about like deploying in our data center top typically developers don't even worry about network security or like things like that but when you go to the cloud you need to understand what is iam how do you create users you need to understand how to set up a networking like how do you set the boundaries of who is allowed to talk to a database how do you set the boundaries of who is allowed to talk to your back end api right so those kind of things become a little tricky but those are things you can learn right those are not uh, like if you learn it the right way those things you would be able to learn so i would advise anybody who's in a full stack development mode try and deploy your application to the cloud right pick one of the clouds try and deploy your application to the cloud and that would be the f- first starting point uh, to the cloud and once you are in the cloud things like devops like for example uh, if you want to deploy your application to the cloud right so one of the ways of doing that is to create a container right so instead of uh, deploying for example if you have a java application or a python application right instead of creating a python package or a java jar what you do is you would actually package everything together so you will create a jar uh, you will like have python you will have the operating system you will create a container and you will use the container to deploy to the cloud right so this would ensure that this same container goes into all the environments earlier if i wanted to deploy a java application or a python application you had different processes but by getting into containers whether it's a java application whether it's a python application or a node application you can deploy into deploy it the same way right and as we start moving into the containers world uh, we would have many containers uh, maybe multiple instances of each co- um, many containers for different applications multiple instances of container same co- i mean multiple instances for the same application so managing all these might become difficult and that's why some of the enterprises go for kubernetes which is a container orchestration solution instead of having one container when you'd want to run 100 containers and you'd want to manage all the non functional aspects around it and also you'd want to ensure you want to have a lot of flexibility around your releases those are the kinds of situations you would go for uh, kubernetes right but somebody who's just starting off don't need, doesn't need to worry about kubernetes at the start probably they would just start with cloud deploy their application to the cloud and if their enterprise is making use of kubernetes then they can go ahead and probably try and understand what is containers and kubernetes pavan do you have any points to add yeah, yeah. <clears throat> when uh, when ranga mentioned like it's all about what is the boundary like who can talk to this right when when you are working on the cloud so that's where i think people have to focus on understanding authentication authorization concepts it's not just on the application layer it's also yeah. on the network layer right exactly so when exactly. they try to understand those concepts they can easily understand uh, the virtual private cloud and, and all other concepts absolutely absolutely so those are the important i mean those are like the reason why i focus i mean there are a lot of things which are different in the cloud but the reason i focused on that because that is something which is really really different right and yes. that is something which we don't even worry about when we are on our on premise kind of a thing yes. so as you as pawn is saying networking and security like both of those things like especially things like iam uh, identity management 
and authorization kind of things, right? Those are the things which uh, we would need to focus on. Yes, that's amazing, Nanda. So, so can you tell us about the job opportunities when it comes to full stack development? <laughs> I mean, uh, very, very good, very, very, very good, right? So, um, if you look at if you're a backend developer versus a full stack developer, there are more job opportunities. And also, I would say typically 20 to 40 percent higher salaries as well. So, yeah, both uh, there are more opportunities, plus you get higher salary. So and also, I mean, the, for me, another important thing is learning a new language, right? So if you are a backend developer learning JavaScript, for example, learning JavaScript or any new language for that matter gives you more exposure and gives you uh, like a different kind of thought process. And anything that gives you that kind of a thought process change, I would recommend people to go for. Because uh, like one of the most difficult things uh, that we keep doing continuously is learning, right? We keep learning. And for me, like learning is all about new ideas, right? By learning new languages, you get new ideas. And yeah, that's very, very important as a software developer. You need to keep exploring new ideas, seeing how to do the same thing differently. And that's what I think having a full stack developer knowledge enables you to as well. So it's not only good from your job aspect, but also from a personal growth as a technical guy, it's also important. Yeah. So I, I would believe like, right. So when you are a full stack, you 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 have all the opportunities of full stack. You have all, all the opportunities of backend. You have all the opportunities of front end, right? Yeah, so yeah. there is so much scope you have, right? Absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah. It's not like you're downscaling for the role. You get into the role and obviously you'll find opportunities in the project when you're growing in the organization. So you don't have to worry about it. I believe. Absolutely. I think like one of the things I learned over my career is the best learning happens when you put yourself in uncomfortable positions. Yes. Exactly. Right. Uh, so, yeah. I, I like, so if, a, if I'm a backend developer, trying to develop a front end is trying to put myself in an uncomfortable, uncomfortable. position and putting an, yourself in an uncomfortable position where you have help ready right if i'm on a project where there are already existing front end developers and i'm building a front end that's a very very good situation to be in because if i have a problem i have somebody to reach out to yes, right so okay. yeah so it's uh, that's the way i look at it right so put yourself in a place where you are exploring a technology and you have experts for that technology present with you uh, yeah, that's that's uh, like so you're paid for learning that's uh, always a good thing to do yeah, exactly okay. yes Ranga, so that's all i had for today so yeah. over to you for if you have any more things to add no i uh, think yeah uh, I think we're all good <laughs> okay yes cool. I, I think i'm pretty much good Ranga. i think yeah the questions that balaji has right uh, they, they they are like very insightful and they triggered a question in me as well like you know okay Full stack is not just about application, right? It's about the whole whole process of building the software. Right. Right. So right. there are so many That's things that you have to learn apart from building the application. Uh, so yeah, and I yeah. think uh, we, we like you have spoken a, a lot about it. The software lifecycle. There are so many tools that you have to learn in, as a process of it and all. So, yeah. Yeah. So, but good I mean, uh, yeah. I, like, the thing which I would want to end with is don't complicate it a lot, right? Full yes. stack developer is a journey. It's not uh, something you can do in a day. So start yes. with one yeah. thing. Keep it simple. Start with either backend or front end. Right? Become good at it. And only then think about adding a new skill. Yes. If you try to do everything at one go, you will end up being uh, like you will end up doing nothing. So rather than that, focus on one part and slowly add other parts in. And that's how you can become a full stack developer. It's not about uh, doing everything at once. It's about once at a time. Focus on it. Learn it really, really well and only then move on to the next steps. Okay. Thanks a lot, Balaji and Pawan. For, uh, glad to have you here. Uh, thanks for taking the time to be here. And I'll see you, you. again in another video very, very soon. Okay. Thank thanks, you. Thanks. 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 It's my pleasure. Thanks, Balaji. It was nice uh, talking to you both. Thank you. Watching this video is a great first step. How do you remember what you have learned in this video for a long time? Pause, review, and write down the three most important takeaways from this video and post them in the comments. What's more, five lucky winners win free access to one of our amazing courses. So pause, post the comment and continue.